see sis and brother-in-law are first ones here. Yeah, they made it, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Well, how y'all doing down there in Burlington? A little bit cold out there tonight. Sister Kessler, stay warm out there, y'all. <laughs> y'all got all your stuff for so when you get snowed in? This is coming, they say, tomorrow. Okay. Hey, Jill Jill. Glad you're here, sweetheart. Good Glad to see you. Glad you're with us. Let us know if you hear us. And, uh, yeah, see you hear us okay? And everything looks okay on your end. or Our end looks pretty good. Let's see who else, come, who else came in. JK and Esther. Okay. Okay. Let's go for it. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Do you? Nope, but we'll, <laughs> there's always something good. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go here. Hope you guys have had a good day. We've had kind of busy day. Yeah, a little bit busy. Baby girl had to get her hair fixed today. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Sherlyn and Gary. Well, there we go. Yeah. Devonya, glad you're here. Okay, you ready to roll, Daddy Yo and Mommy Yo? Ready to roll, ready to roll. Okay, good evening, good evening, good evening. Mm -hmm. All the little chippies out there. Mm -hmm. Dion, you and hey, George. Hey, Dee And you and George. Hope you guys are doing good. Okay. We're managing over here and trying to the get bit, situated. The big city of Kernersville. K Vegas. <laughs> okay. We we were talking last time about the the violence that we have going on in the in the earth nowadays because of the the politicians. Oh my gosh. It is it is really uh, it is really something. It's really a pickle. Yes, but, uh, it is. Yes, it is. We're finding out that uh, separation and division is all a part of the ego. Yeah, yeah. And that ego part is something that we Westerners haven't ventured into much as the Easterners, but we need to investigate into the definition of that so uh, we can begin to understand why and what causes things to be what it is. And yeah, yeah. they work the way it does because we're finding out that uh, if we could go into our true identity, which is beyond thinking, beyond reasoning, beyond trying to figure out, all that we need to know would be immediately revealed, effortlessly, we call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There would be no rush. There would be no... Lack and slack and getting back jack. <laughs> That's it. And you wouldn't have to forsake Jesus. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's really weird how somebody could be such a part of us and through the, the mind we can forsake him or I forsake know. it. That how, do you, how do you forsake somebody and you're with them 24-7? I mean, you're never but, apart from But them. you can. Only through feeling, thinking, and reasoning, so we call it sophisticated reasoning. And you know that's ha that happens to a lot of couples as well. Yeah, they they stay in the same house and they're still legally married, but they separate on the inside mm -hmm, in, in mm -hmm. their inner self. Mm -hmm. They're they're separated. Okay, you hear us great, Miss Phyllis. Thank you for that. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> now hand up. <laughs> The hand up. Yeah, the fist up. Yeah. And um, we have, uh, when, you, when you wake up, you look at things a lot different. The paper and the book even look different. Yes. You don't, you don't discuss it the way you used to on a debated issue. I know. We have this new, new phrase, phrase we say, uh, but being paper Bible saved. Yeah, that's what I've been wanting to say. Paper, paper, 
book saved. Mm -hmm, yeah. Some of us are, we have been paper book saved, paper Bible saved. And, and yeah. But we are no longer paper Bible saved because our allegiance is not to that book, even though we value the book and we use it for its principles and the good sayings that are in it we, and the truth that is laced in it, we do not put our allegiance in that more than we put it in Christ himself. Hey, Michelle, my bell. And okay. Pat. Okay. Uh, the, the, the eternal infinite self does not have a war in it. It observes the wars and looks through the sight of mm -hmm. beingness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally different mm -hmm. than what we've been conditioned for. Yeah. Uh, we have made that something has made a covenant that regardless of what uh, the books say or the papers say, uh, it looks at things different. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that have made a covenant with the, the, the material world through the ego that everything that is physical is more real than the invisible. Yeah, and you know, Pastor and I, we kind of got on our soapbox Sunday, but that's okay because we can get on our soapbox again uh, with all of the things that have been happening in our country and uh, the, the things that are looming over this country that some of our people, some people here are facing is devastating and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to turn that off and mm -hmm. just think positive mm -hmm. when you have so many negative things happening and so many things that are we're seeing so many things trying to be dismantled and mm -hmm. um, one of them of course is our democracy and our, and mm -hmm. our voting system uh, the way it's being dealt with and, and you know, like I said before, when they, the meeting was going on in D.C., that if they had come together, the evangelicals and all the religious leaders, uh, somebody asked the question, why didn't one of the prophets or one of the people see all this coming? They would have and could have mm -hmm. if they had not been so involved with the uh, uh, the stars and the entertaining, entertaining and being over overwhelmed by being around our leader mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because uh, mm -hmm. the word of god that they were they were the word they physically were the word standing there but they decided to couple up with what they wanted in their agenda well what what i've noticed and i've i've been guilty of it myself is how quickly we change mm -hmm. when we get around somebody that mm -hmm. we think has Mm -hmm. Some has more money than we do, mm -hmm. uh, has a influence. Influence, uh, yeah. We yeah. get awestruck, and we tend not to speak honestly or mm -hmm. act honestly mm -hmm. with them. We, we actually put on a different persona with those people than we do with your regular, regular average person that you meet on the street. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's a lot of hypocrisy. And so what we're seeing is agendas are being put in front of the good of people so it, it, it's a little bit disturbing yeah now the truth disturbing. the truth that they were that we are and he as our leader was inside his true identity outside of the shell and the mind and the conditioned cells that was around him truth was there but it was not allowed to speak for uh for the power of another entity mm -hmm. that was around mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Surely, yes, all of our leaders of the country have chosen by God, and that's understood. But when you go to uh, politicking and religiousing <laughs> and putting that's the, word. yeah, religiousing, putting that together <laughs> and trying to make something happen instead of presenting what is truth. Truth yeah, is yeah. Yeah. that somebody should have said to whatever need to be said to who about the character of God and the, the, the spiritual aspect of what's going on in the country. Because that, that, that moral character is more important than the agenda being made. Right. Yes. Now, we have thousands of people who are out of, they have no homes. They, uh, they won't have. They won't have. Mm -hmm. And 
and there's a big fight between the uh, the stimulus and the, the the funds that it needed to help. And there are some countries that are helping their people out uh, more so than they are in our place of yes. residence over here. Yes. And uh, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, it's going to all come out in the end. But if you could hold on to your infinite self, like mm -hmm. I said, that young that guy that came up to me. Uh, on the block that I, I reached out and helped over in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, he didn't have a place to stay. And there's some people that uh, if you help them get out of the poverty that they're in because of their conditioning self, they would go right back they to it. They would go right back to it, yes. But right our there. job is to go in it, seeing what's sitting out there on the block in their true identity, and yes. speak to that yes. that this that is infinite, that is eternal. Yeah, yeah. Now, and I do realize this, that we have no power over what is appearing to us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is being presented in our experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have the control of how we choose to see it. And so I realize this, that this is not a time for anyone to take sides. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a time for anyone to take a stand and and become fight and belligerent. Well, you know, the book said he to see if his brother need and shut up his bowels of compassion to one and where dwelleth the love of God. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna go book, you might go you go you might well book the thing all the way. As Gary said, go bookish. <laughs> go book it. Yeah, go bookish. That's right, go bookish. But um uh it is absolutely amazing that uh, God has really revealed himself in the earth nowadays, outside of all this cloudy stuff. Mm -hmm. He's revealing mm -hmm. himself to mm -hmm. thousands, mm -hmm. and God is appearing to thousands yes. in, uh, in, the, in the true kingdom self, in the and true yes. kingdom yes. Uh, revelation. And I can't help but believe and know that good is going to come out of all of these things that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like it's going to mm -hmm. be good, mm -hmm. but I do believe that it will be good because there is no uh, there is no way that good will not triumph. Good. One of the things that I realized, too, is that when a person's mind is clear, mm -hmm. uh, their, their choices uh, are different. Their choices are different. Um, so some of the things that we're seeing is because there is, and I said this before, it's almost like there's a spell over some of the people in our country. There's a spell over some of the, uh, uh, I hate to say it, evangelicals. There's mm -hmm. a spell over their minds. There's a, 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 a sh uh, it's like a veil over their minds that's keeping them from seeing clearly mm -hmm. what should or should not happen. And so, uh, not that I'm pulling for either one. It's just that there should not be any more fighting. That's right. And we said it on Sunday <clears throat> when Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Yeah, that's what so he said. So if we are truly <laughs> servants, then we mm -hmm. cannot be fighting if we're, in the, if, he, if we're in that kingdom. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing that we're beginning to understand. And he said, thinkest thou not that I cannot now pray to my father and... He shall presently, presently mm -hmm. give me mm -hmm. more than 12 legion of angels. Yeah. But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're coming to a place where um, we can actually see where that can be fulfilled. But you have to be willing to let go of what is called positionalities. Yeah, <laughs> positionalities mm. is what mm. got is what getting all the marches in D.C. and around the country yeah. fighting from the left side to the right side it's is the positionality. ego positionalities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everybody wants to be right. Yeah. One of the first things I I, I can say about um, waking up to my true identity and this, this has happened to us over years, is that I had to be willing to give up being right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I used to think that the righteousness you know of... You that song? They made a song out of that. Mm -hmm. I just want to be right. I don't that remember a, that one. Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. 
I just want to be right. Now, I don't remember all of it, mm, no. but it, it was a song, mm -hmm, <laughs> a, mm -hmm. a gospel song made mm -hmm. where they said, I just want to be right. <laughs> the, the, when, I, I, when I started in this, I had no, we had no idea that we were going to come into a place. Now, I'm going to say this to all you, uh, the uh, position in apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I never <laughs> thought that I would come to a place where all of that meant Nothing. 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 Absolutely when you when nothing. you really press your way into <laughs> the seeing, mm. S E E I N G, mm. through the eyes of your beingness, alreadiness, absolute pure self. And I used to think that none is pure but God. But if God is pure and He's in us as us, mm -hmm. then there is a place. There is a part of us. That is just like him. Yes, it is. it is. I mean, just no, no wavering, no storm, no violence. How about it's not just, just like, like him, but is him? Thank you. I'm glad you broke it down to the right, to the core. <laughs> That's right. And um, uh, the prayers that we are praying is the, the, the prayer that is being prayed is a prayer of existence in that dimension. And it's not words. It's not words. Because my heart and your heart, and I'm sure some of you guys who are listening to us, your hearts are praying for, for people who are getting ready to face some of the greatest challenges that they've ever faced. Mm -hmm. And the, it, the, the power and the strength to wade through this is, is, an, is on an unconscious, not visible area until after it has gone through this. Yeah. And uh, you'd be surprised <laughs> as to how powerful. If, if I always say it like this. If we could unveil ourselves in our true identity right now in front of everybody, it yeah. would be mm -hmm. the love of God would overwhelm the whole universe. When I found out that when one person, one being, wake yeah. up in this dimension, yeah. the ripple effect goes through the whole universe, it does. It all does. across the universe, like waves. It's actually the glue and the consistency that's holding everything together. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now that's the reason why I, in, in our classes we were teaching about the pony motor, because when you discover what you can do <clears throat> in this dimension without asking for permission. Mm -hmm. to do by finding out uh, what is legal within the bounds of the laws mm -hmm. of the life of the spirit. Right. Right. You don't have to fast and pray and seek God. You know, I hear people say all the time, I need to go away and seek God about this situation. <laughs> well, the situation is mm -hmm. God in it. When he's in, when you in it, he's in it. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, 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 you're seeking God to be in a situation that he's already aware of, mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. saying that? And you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know if we're still on our soapbox or not, but it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. I keep asking this question. Why is it that we as American citizens are having to have this experience right now? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is it that is, what is the reasoning behind us having this experience right now, from the virus to everything that's happening in our government, all of that, what is the reasoning for all of this uh, that has brought up in a side of all, a lot of us, disturbances, mm -hmm. uh, conflicts, and so I'm wondering what is it, what is the need for this experience? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I do believe this that the virus itself has caused us to take a step back mm -hmm. as people to step to take a step back and to, to really look at what is really, really important when it comes to our social lives. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're finding out that social social events, while they have some value, they are not the most important thing. What is most important right now is are we all going to do what it takes mm -hmm. to keep each other safe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's causing us to take a step back and, and realize that we are, we have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of us live as though we have no expiration mm -hmm, date. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking now about uh, from the place of our eternal self. 
because as an as a mortal being, as a human being, there's an expiration here. Mm -hmm. And so we lived our lives as though there is no expiration. My heart desire and prayer for our leader of the country is that uh, that he would submit himself to humility and humbleness yeah. and side up with and the... And not only him, the whole, the whole, whole country. Bunch of them, yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of them. And, and go ahead on and accept the, the new position that is uh, taking place in the country. Okay. And I've seen so many times over the past four years where there was such an uh, opening, a door open yeah. for him to win the whole nation to really leave to really and all it had to be all it had to be said was i'm wrong i made a mistake mm -hmm. now i'm wondering i'm wondering now this is a big one i'm wondering as this thing go on what is the church going to say the evangelical the church, evangelical church, church yeah. not all of us now not all church, yeah. the evangelical church going to say at this point of where it has been settled that our new leader is in position mm. How are they going to deal with this thing? Mm -hmm. Because some of them said that they were told by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were told by God without any any question in it yeah. of another four years. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with this? And it's the same thing that was with the Y2K. It was the same way. I'm not on my soapbox, but I'm just yeah. I'm telling we're, we're you how are, it's that's okay. okay. It's, okay. It's, it's very important that we understand that something is strategically taking place yes. in the land yes. Yes. that's causing that's calling for needs to be bowed all over the country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you pray for one president you must pray for all, all of them exactly you don't you don't divide it up because all of a sudden you got a revelation that god told you yeah. to pray for this one and your prayer should not be Help him to meet my agenda. No, no. But your no. prayer should be for his awakening. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. his clarity. Now, one of the things that is very important in discernment is that you be able to hear through our voice and through the others that are speaking who it is as the eye that speak. Mm -hmm. Where is the source of that conversation yeah, coming from? Where is it issuing from? That's mm -hmm. right. Now we are. We, we have to speak freedom language. Yeah, and and that the language that that speaks from your infinite self is a total different flavor. Yeah, and you know I I realized this years ago, and we were we were still in our larger building over mm -hmm. on Wendover when when I realized this that all of these thoughts that I had that God was demanding something of me. I realized God wasn't demanding a thing of me that that was my own egotistical, mm -hmm, spiritualized mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. that thought God wanted that and required that. So I found out that God wasn't really pushing me and demanding uh, anything from me. And that voice that pushes and demands is not God. If the, if the saying is that the mind thinks, the heart knows. We are the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The heart that is much deeper than uh, lasciviousness, greed, and uh, anger and mm -hmm. resentment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, fighting to get something. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I remember when my wife's father passed, uh, we had an opportunity, she did, we our whole family had an opportunity to go before the, the, the lawyers and bring a lawsuit against him yeah. because he admitted that he made the wrong term. The doctor did. The doctor did, mm -hmm. made the wrong term with his uh, surgical procedure. And he sat in the room with my sister-in-law and my wife and them and admitted that he made the wrong turn. But when my wife left, she left him. If you had seen what his expression was, he's a very sorrowful, broken yeah, man. Renee and Renee could vouch for this because she, was, she and I were both there. We decided we wanted to talk to him mm -hmm. after, yeah. after Dad died, mm -hmm. and we realized... A lot of people were saying you should sue the doctor, you should sue the doctor, and, mm -hmm. and we may should have, mm -hmm. but at that time it didn't matter. All we were thinking about is our dad's gone. Yeah. And But when we sat and talked to that doctor, he was so remorseful. Renee and I cried, and he cried, and we didn't have the heart mm -hmm. to put him through mm -hmm. that. That's right. Even though we had lost our dad. That's and right. And so... 
and, and for, to sue for him the sake, for it, the sake of having yeah, some money. Yeah, and to sue him would not brought that back. No, but for the sake of having mm-hmm. money, we could not, we didn't do it. And I don't know, somebody would say that was stupid, but for us, that's the mindset mm-hmm. we had. That's mm-hmm. the heart set we had at the time. I was used to be so quick to, uh, to say to anybody that was singing on our praise and worship team and playing an instrument that we would not have anybody up there uh, playing the instrument with living in sin and adultery yeah, and all that. Live the way we wanted them to yeah, live. Yeah, and then I found out that there are thousands of people in churches right now that are p- playing these instruments that are living what we call unholy life, and we know nothing about it. <laughs> well, now we realize, okay, was, was it really unholy or were, they, were we just mad because they were having more fun than us? <laughs> I've had opportunity to take certain members of my family to court uh, on, on banking uh, uh, arrangements that they accused me of, of doing things, yeah. and I could have, yeah. but because... And we wonder why. We wonder why we didn't have the mindset mm-hmm. to the retaliate. Mindset, the mindset, man, you've been <laughs> loaded by now with yeah, that kind yeah. of lawsuit. You wouldn't have to, your house be paid for, your car be paid for, my car and both my automobiles are paid for now. We got a <laughs> vehicle out there now. Haven't driven it in two weeks. Paid for <laughs> And I didn't have to sue anybody to get it. That's true. That's true. But you know, that's the way the mind thinks. It, it so, thinks that uh, through so, the ego that you so have to. So walking def- from the fight. heart space, living from the heart space, uh, it, it will, it will not seem logical to some people the choices that you make, mm-hmm. because they will think it, egotistically they will think you should retaliate, you should take a take a stand, you should you should fight for this, you should, and so. And then I look back on it after the fact, and I think, well, maybe I should have. You know, when I get when I get lost in the mind, and I start to think, well, I could have had more money. I could have. Then I that's when that egotism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. pops right back up. I run across a lot of people, and of course, you have too if you've been in the restaurants. Uh, they work and serve people, and a lot of them don't even have insurance. They don't have medical provision. Mm-hmm. Don't know. Don't have anything. They're working making a dollar from tips and, and, and yeah. serving people. They give their life for that. And uh, they really appreciate it when you give them extra monies to help them. I, I, I love going into a place like that. And uh, I used to would do it and hadn't done it lately. Uh, can you, I don't mean to be personal, but uh, do you, would you bring your light bill to me? <laughs> and I said, when you bring it, I will pay your light bill for you. Mm-hmm. All I'm asking mm-hmm. you to do is that when you pay it, bring me the receipt back. And all you're saying is nobody has to do it the way we do it. No, you don't have but, to do it that but way. But all we're saying is there should be a genuine caring. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If you're living from that heart space, there's a genuine caring yeah. about other people. When I was raised up as in... As well as yourself. I was raised up on Cherry Street in Winston. I lived with, I thought, maybe some others would be worse. I lived with, I thought, I live with the devil. <laughs> the man that raised me, he took care of me. He got me out of jail, right. my body that is. Yeah. He got yeah. me out of jail. He fed me, and and, and the devil took care of you. And it, yeah, took care of me. <laughs> and, and it was in his house, in his mean house, that yeah. Jesus was there yeah. and appeared to me in person, and changed the way I looked at. Before he died, I had a chance to look him in the face mm-hmm. and tell him mm-hmm. I forgive him and I released him mm-hmm. with tears, mm-hmm. travailing tears. I did that. And, you know, I think back, what my point is, I wish I had told him, and he can hear me now, I wish I had told him, thank you for the bread that you put on the table. Yes. Thank yes. you for the light that was never turned off. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the groceries that you bought in. Thank you for getting me out of jail. Thank you for, he even took me when I was little. And, uh, and the, the, the strange thing about it, uh, you guys, is that everybody in my family, every one of them practically on my uncle and, and my mother's, mother's side, used to stay with him because he was a bootlegger and he had money and he always <laughs> had provision mm-hmm. and everybody wanted his money. Mm-hmm. And uh, he took care of me and I wished I had said this that I'm saying to you now. Thank you 
for all the years that you gave me a place to stay. Now, when I acted ugly, he would call my daddy down there and he would say, <clears throat> we're going to have to find somewhere else for him to stay. <laughs> and it wasn't, wasn't long after I got up in my 20s and met this girl right here that I found somewhere to stay. I'm still a girl. Yeah, she's still a girl. She's my girl. Talking about my girl. And um, <laughs> my Sue, girl. Sue, Sue, <laughs> Sue said she thinks she's lived with the devil too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, quite a few of us think. Oh that. lord! But, you know, I realize that it's easier to notice the flaws than it is to see the good. That's right. And, but what really connects all of us is all of our flaws. And Miss Sue, <laughs> I know what you're talking about, girl, and I understand. Me and, me and the wife been really in conference about uh, about what's going on around you yeah, and, and in your life. Yeah. I know how it is, but you know the power that it takes to contend with that. Is oh, supernatural. It's God. Yeah. It is God. Yeah. I ain't going to tell you no other way. It ain't no other <laughs> way. That song said, ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way. It just ain't no way you can <laughs> you can say it any other way. Then it's got to be God because ain't, you know, I, I, hey, I tried a lot of time to get my aunt, who who was my, my uh, uncle's wife. I tried to get her to walk <laughs> off and leave him. I used to have to call the police Every weekend, I finally, as a five, six-year-old boy, I found out how to use a telephone, <laughs> and I'd call the police out there. I called them my house so much that when they, they didn't even turn the side ring on. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just part of the job. <laughs> they just, I just look up, and they show up, and I've seen them pile up yeah. in my house, come in my house, turn the furniture over and everything. And and he'd be running around in his old raggedy pajamas, half showing everything, and tell him you ain't got no search warrant. They'll slap a search warrant in his face, and he still said it wasn't no search warrant. Mm. But I know that what I went through, there was something in it that God, in this time that we speak, was going to use to bring edification yeah. into yeah. my and, life. And, and that is true, and that's that's what we're saying. And I'm not sure why we're having to experience what we're experiencing mm -hmm. right now. As a, as a country, as people uh, in this country. But I do know that whatever it is that we're, uh, it's designed to do, it mm -hmm. will do. And so there, it is a time when things are being dismantled and some other new things are, are coming into play. And so it's, it's going to be a different opportunity. So it is a time, and I think I said this to one of my sweethearts that emailed me, uh, Tina, I think it was Tina, that this is really a time to think out of the box because we've heard some pro one particular prophet saying this is not time for brick and mortar and talking about the buildings, uh, being in the buildings and, and because this virus is not going to allow us to continue to congregate as we have in the past. And so now we've got to think completely out of the box. Mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. If we're going to continue to do what we've been doing, and do it more effectively, mm -hmm. we're going to have to think differently than we did before because we're not going to be able to stand behind a pulpit in front of people and have services like we used to have. God will acknowledge his self in your life as the heat is turned up seemingly to us. Mm -hmm. He will not allow his presence in your life to not to be known because the heat that's coming on you and the pressure is really a tool that causes God to come forward into visible consciousness to reveal who it is that's going through this in your form. So this is a God, uh, this, this is a we're, we're in the fire, but this is a refiner's fire. God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar's fiery furnace, seven times, whatever it was it said, don't quote me on that, hotter than it, it was so hot that the men that stood around the furnace couldn't stand it. Oh, God man. appeared in there as the fourth man in the furnace. Mm -hmm. And in this pressure, he preserved them. No smoke, no singe of smell wow. was on them. Yes, it come yes, out yes. pure. Yes. The refiner's fire, Mm -hmm. was what you were going through and I was going through growing up. And still, 
And still, that's yeah, right. Yeah, and still. With what I, we're I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad we can talk about this. Yes, and it, that's what that's what we're experiencing now. There mm -hmm. is a fire that's in this. Yeah. Country. In fact, it's yeah. all over the world. Yeah. But specifically in this country, I know it's a fire. Yeah. The fire is fire. Yeah. And it's going to purify, and it's going to clarify. There are gifts of the eternal soul that that were meant. These gifts do not, like for instance. Superman came from Krypton in the story, in the movie. This is a movie. And when he got to Earth, his natural abilities was enhanced because of the dimension that he came to. Because of the dimension that you had to go through in this storyland called everyday life growing up, the strength and the power of the presence of God, your God identity, was set in motion cornerstoned the stone that the builders rejected caused acceptance of God. Your worst day on your last worst nerve was there to bring forth a message. You are the sermon of God. You are the message of God. You are the scriptures of God. Hallelujah. You are the word walking present now updated version fully fulfilling itself mm -hmm. from those mm -hmm. mishaps seemingly mm -hmm. from your past, from the past to the present now moment. God has always been in the now for all of us. Yes. Woo, yes. Glory be to God. Yes. I, I could cut a step right now. Scripture. Well, let me read a yeah, comment here. Go I ahead. see some go good ahead. comments coming up. Michelle Mabel has a comment. She said, I'm feeling deeply that the vaccine is not even a vaccine, but rather a means of control by evil forces. Can you please tell me what the Creator is telling you about this? What do you see happening? Well, let's see. I can't say yay or nay, but I can say this. That you take a risk even if you don't take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. You take a risk if you take it. You take a risk if you don't take it. I want to read this scripture. Yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll talk to that we, we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit, Michelle. We'll in talk just a, with moment. Just a moment. In chapter 3 of Malachi, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Now, I want you to understand that you are the temple. We are the temple, mm -hmm. okay? He shall come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? So this whole thing that's happening around us, to us, among us, is the appearing of God. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the coming of of that Christ into this realm. And it is a, a it's like a, a chaotic time because it has to happen. And then it said this, who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire mm -hmm. and like fuller's soap. So that sounds to me like there's going to be a lot of purging going on. Yeah, it is. A already. lot of clearing already. out and, and tearing down things that no longer work and getting rid of concepts that no longer suit us or serve us. And so that is the coming of the Lord into this realm. If you don't want to take the vaccine, or if you do take the vaccine, mm -hmm. there should not be fear on either side. Exactly. It's just the same way about wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. I had one of my neighbors I talked to from his vehicle told me, he said, I said something about the uh, vaccine and, and the, the damn panic. He said, I'm not going to walk in fear, I'm going to walk in faith. At mm -hmm. the same time, he wasn't wearing a mask and, didn't, and wasn't going to wear one because he believed God. Now, it's, 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 it's the reconnaissance of this is in your hands. You can, you can take the shot or not. Nobody's forcing you to do it. And there's no reason why you should feel pressured to do either one. Mm -hmm. But if the government says take it, then I would say yes. If it is free for you to make a choice, then you stay in your choices. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. But either way you go, there are consequences. It's not the matter of God telling me to tell you something. It is about you seeing through the eyes of God mm -hmm. exactly for you personally 
uh, something that you need to do or not do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, well, I want to address something mm -hmm. that Marla put up there as well. Mm -hmm. She said, I heard from UK nurses that there is aborted fetal cells in COVID vaccine. That may be true. I don't know. But there's also aborted fetal cells in your lipstick and mm -hmm. in your makeup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's no way to absolutely escape it unless you go completely off grid. <laughs> if you go to messing with this in your intellect, mm -hmm. in your mind, you're going to miss the peace mm -hmm. that you are in your eternal self. You will. This thing is going over and over in people's heads all over the country. And we read about it years ago, over 50 years ago, we read about it, about how they were going to put something in the, in the in, in, in vaccines that was going to be connected mm -hmm. to the Antichrist mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And I'd like to say this, too, and I can't say if any of that's true. I won't say it's not true because I don't know. Uh, but I know we have lived for the last four years in conspiracy theories. How many and, times have you taken the flu shot? Well, okay. There ain't no difference. We have lived the last four years in conspiracy mm -hmm. theories. Yeah, we have. I want to say that. Yeah. And I don't want to live any longer under conspiracy mm -hmm. theories. Mm -hmm. If I don't know it's true, then I'm going to treat it as if it's not. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's up to you. I mean, yeah, you, you go into a restaurant, you can eat what they got in there or not. Mm -hmm. I had a guy said uh, he was sitting across the table from me one time, and he said, you know, the, I found out that the stuff they feeding us in these restaurants is junk. And I sat around and looked at him. I said, would you say something like that right in a restaurant while people are eating? Was it's he a way. in the restaurant? Yeah, he was right there in the restaurant. Sitting was he eating? eating? Yeah. <laughs> he said, they're eating the food, talking junk about uh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. But but now, this is this is the thing. When we, we do uh, blessing our food mm -hmm, and all that mm -hmm. stuff as a religious practice, mm -hmm. why not bless your food so that it would be clean for you? Why not bless the vaccine before you take it so it will have nothing in it that will harm you? This, Why not yeah, use yeah. your blessing power to actually transmutate whatever it may be in that that is harmful? They tell me that America is a free country, so if you don't want to take it, don't take it. Exactly. If you want to take it, take it. It's and we're not fussing. We're not fussing. No, no. We're just saying... If you get caught up in that, you will be in a whirlwind and you may not get out. That's right. That's right. Now, we are going to keep going in this thing because Jesus and us are the beloved mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on the love that God is eternal. Mm -hmm. Never ending love. And I'm telling you, this thing is yeah. something. Before you put this thing into motion, you need to understand the flow of the ocean. Oh, okay. This thing that we're talking about has been working in the universe from if there ever was a day one, it has been there. And if that has been there, that means this. Yeah. In your infinite self, you have always existed. Now, let me tell you something about the, the serum. Every the vaccine. vaccine, everything that they make up and get out of med medication. Now watch this. Comes from the spirit world. Now here's what I'm telling you. Here's what I'm trying to get you to see. Okay. I had an opportunity to go on the other side. And I remember sitting in a, a group of doctors. And I mentioned this. And boy, they come against me. I said, there's a cure for cancer. They went off on me in there. Busted me down to the lowest toenail. <laughs> And that was when everybody was in the faith movement. The faith, hear it, see it, believe it, confess receive it. it. Yeah, confess it, yeah. Now, when I was on the other side, I had a chance to be in a place to see and understand the training centers that every physician and every mm -hmm. doctor in other areas of life mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. There's not, there's a room, there's a place inside of you where all information and downloads exist. That's in save or unsafe people. Everything comes from the what is called the uni universe, the universe of the world of the spirit being self. Now you can break it up in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. 
spirit, soul, and body. You can break it up in many pieces that you want to. But there's only one piece. It's like a, a door. You don't need a whole bunch of keys to open the door unless you got a bunch of different locks on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, one key operates at one lock. Now listen, when I was there, I saw the training centers of where doctors receive their training. I've, I've been in, uh, in surgical <laughs> procedures where I've actually had my eyes to open and see when I had carpal tunnel surgery on both my ribs. I saw the, the, the parallel universe and how mm-hmm. doctors were working on this side on my wrist and they were working on the other side over there doing the same thing. They were doubles, right. doppelgangers, right. and they were working. Every training, I like it when I go so to the doctor. So what you're saying is medical science is yeah. not evil in, its no, se- in no. of itself. The research centers, I call them, they're research centers. Whenever I go to a doctor, somehow or another I get a chance to tell them, I say, Doc, I said, can I tell you something? I said, I had what is called a near-death-like experience. And I said, I saw a place over there on the other side in heaven where you had all your training before you came to earth. There was a doctor in High Point that I talked to, a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I told him after doing, going through a procedure, a colonoscopy, I told him sitting on the side of the bed recovering from the anesthesia, I told him, I said, I saw you in India and I saw your anesthesiologist in California and I saw both of you do your training in heaven before coming to earth. And I told him all the details about his life mm-hmm. over there coming here. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm convinced. I didn't see this in the book and on paper. This is my personal experience. So yeah. if you haven't had this, it does not mean yeah. that I'm more right than you. I'm just telling you what happened. Mm-hmm. And I know now in the knowing part of me, of my heart, that every doctor and every bit of information of uh, uh, medication is all existed. Now watch this. The healing power of God mm-hmm. is all in the universe. It's it been is. covered up with all mm-hmm. kinds of things. Now, once you get into your true identity, fully fully impacted by your your eternal self, all of this stuff that you question that you're asking is cleared out. Cleared and out. Every, yeah, and go I, ahead. I'd like to say this, too, about the vaccine. Uh, this is not going. This vaccine will not be a cure. Um, it is just like the flu shot. It is there to slow down the potentiality mm-hmm. of the the uh, threat of this virus. But it is not a cure, and it will. The virus itself will probably uh, transmutate. It'll probably change, uh, take on uh, different. Um, qualities and find ways to to get around the vaccine so i mean the vaccine itself is not the solution no. it is just something to help and assist but it is not the cure so while we look for the vaccine and we thank we're thankful for the vaccine we know that that is not going to be the thing that gets rid of this virus altogether there is such a thing called herd immunity where we all, a certain percentage of this country has, or the world has to get the virus in order to have an immune against the immunity against the virus. So it's just where we are. It's just, it's just like when we used to get, uh, we had uh, smallpox and all of those things. Mm-hmm. Eventually those things died out because mm-hmm. there's a herd immunity. So it's just what we have to go through right now. And so navigate your way through this living from your heart space don't get into fear if you can help it. And and just, I say this, use your blessing power. If you are de- if you really are afraid of the vaccine, use your blessing power over your vaccine before you take it or choose not to take it. That's right. That's right. So now we're, we're, you're waking up now. You're waking up to your absolute fullness. Mm-hmm. The fullness of God is fully. You are fully aware that you are not body, mind, but you are yes. infinite, yes. eternal yes. essence. Yes. Now, it is time for you to move on, as they said about our country, move <laughs> on. And the kingdom of God is the son and the daughters of God walking in the earth. They are not, yes. they're neither rich nor poor, lost or to be found. Yes. Yes. They are neither up nor down, in nor out. They are the universe, the real true identity of Christ in the earth. 
Yeah. And the Christ in the earth is that part of you that can never die. Yeah, it is. Never die, never get sick, <laughs> never die, never waver, <laughs> never lie. No, 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 no. That's, there's no yeses inside of you. Yes. Now, the kingdom of God is the life of God. The kingdom of God is the life that you are. And when you leave this body, that life that you are, leads with it. Yes, it you does. take, you're going to, what is it, take your last breath? <laughs> if there's ever a last one, there's a first one. If there's a first <laughs> one, you're going to take it with you. Mm -hmm. When they say, take the Lord with you everywhere <laughs> you go, well, your Lord, uh-oh, here you go. Your Lord is your true self. Yes, it is. It is. Did you hear what I said? I said, take, that song said, take the Lord, take him with you everywhere you go. Oh, take the Lord. When you take your last <laughs> breath. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Where did that hey, come from? take the Lord. You're going to take <laughs> your God self out of this body. You can't, ain't nobody going to drive you out because you set this thing up <laughs> from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Every roadblock, every turn, every stop sign, every speed bump <laughs> that set in motion, mm -hmm. you set it up. So when you get ready, you, the Lord gets ready to go, you will lead with the Lord. The Lord and you are the same breath that you're going to take with you. My God, this stuff is right. Now, now, now you're going to go, hey, give me a book. I don't need no book. You the book. Okay, die. Leave your body. Come on out of it. Go ahead on. Take a break. Step out of it. Do it every night when you go to sleep. <laughs> Step out of it. And when you get back, I want you to, if they let you come back, if you come back, I want you to tell me the truth without book and paper. Tell me what did you see on the other side. You saw one thing you're going to see, and I'll stake my life on it, this life of God. One thing you will see, you ain't dead. <laughs> That's true. You ain't dead. I remember I told you all the story one Nothing time. Nothing really died. That's right. I told you a story Nothing about this really guy died. who was a pastor, and he, uh, his wife, he lost everything. He got down into the dumps in the lower parts of the hell of his life. He said he, he just gave up his evangelism, his whole church. He was a big minister. Went out to drink and hanging around the hell's angels got out there in the, the bar and every time he get drunk he go to preaching to him and them boys got tired of hearing him preaching about God every time he got drunk he get uh, alcohol boom moonshine boom farm religion and they took him out in the alley and beat the heaven in him or out of him and some hell on top of it killed him and left him broke up broke him up un indescribable could not recognize beyond recognition took what was the remain of him to the hospital and he left his body went on the other side and god said his work wasn't finished <laughs> sent him back mm -hmm. in the hospital he was broke up god put every bone back in place mm -hmm. every bit of the bone and everything his identity come back from his eternal self mm -hmm. they stood over and watched him come together in his physical body they called him no die. They called him no die. He went back <laughs> to the hell's angels. I remember one time I was in the hospital with a hell's angel. And I had had a... You shared uh, a room with the hell's angel. Hey, I shared a room with one. And he was the nicest guy. <laughs> Something about being in the hospital breaks some people, but he was the nicest guy. Mm -hmm. And one night I was sleeping over there dreaming. And, and uh, he said, when I woke up the next morning, he said, man, you talked all night. And I said, what did I talk about? You said, you. I talked about pepper steak. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> said I talked about pepper steak all night long in my sleep. Oh, they must have starved you in the hospital. <laughs> well, I couldn't move with that monogram. You know, you can't move. You have to be there, be still. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I looked up, <laughs> and out of all the gentleness that was in that man's that held angel's heart, the police come in and handcuffed him after he recovered and took him away. We look at people's exterior a lot of times mm -hmm. and misjudge them. Uh, because we think that they're hard and they're not. Mm -hmm. But the guy, no die, no die, went back to the Hills Angels after he recovered miraculously, and he shocked all of them <laughs> in the bar, and won every last one of them. 
over to the kingdom of God mm -hmm. in that particular area. Mm -hmm. you, you never know how God's going to work this thing out. All I say to our, our, our leader of the country, I pray that you will humble yourself, and I pray that the evangelicals that are around you mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. way through the, uh, the ministries that have been uh, protesting for you to get a position, I pray that one of the main things that would happen to him is his heart would open up mm -hmm. to where he could mm -hmm. see how to let go of positionality and how to be and stand with our new president. Well, not only mm -hmm. that, not just for our benefit, but mm -hmm. for not for, for him for to him. be relieved of the suffering of having to yeah. live up to an image. Yeah, that he's was, suffering. That he's was suffering. Put into him he from really his conditioning. Is. And and the believers need to understand who it is that's suffering in that body, mm -hmm. and uh, and and if they would give him the true gospel, the true message right. of eternal forgiveness and eternal love, and let go of this thing, they would see one of the most amazing people. And the next four years, whatever that time is, if he's meant to come back, he'll come back. But if mm -hmm. he don't, the man is living in torment. I'm telling you, he's, yes, living, he he's living in a hell of a place yes. in his feeling. Mm -hmm. And we need to help him by, and if you're gonna, if you're gonna sit around the table with him, tell him the truth, regardless of what he, you know he's gonna fire now, who you. who do you think's gonna sit around the table with him? Whenever, I'm praying to whoever it is, the ones that are close to him now, we can't do it, but somebody could. Yeah. And if in order for them to do it, they got to wake up. Yes, they do. That's the message. The message is eternal forgiveness, eternal love. Thank you so much, all of you guys out there, for listening to us tonight. I hope we said something to spark you, yeah. to bring, to be said, bring an, an arising in you, <laughs> because the true resurrection of Christ and is. This was really, you, this was really a heart to heart talk. It was. It was this really is really a heart to heart talk. talk because we want you guys to understand that we're not on this thing here to cause friction and to fuss and to argue with anybody. We just want to present to you. The experiences that we had in the love of God. With me and this girl, been together over 51 years now, going into 52, and we uh, we have our problem, we have our running. We knock each other out every now and then. Yeah, but we end up in the same bed. <laughs> Even though we have to sleep on the well court sometimes. Listen here, I got a big enough bed, I can sleep in the middle of it. <laughs> Us three, me, her, and baby girl, our big old 60 pound dog, sleep in the same bed. Somebody said, I ain't let no dog sleep with me. Well, that's all right. You sleep with them. She gets washed hey, up every night. You sleep with them, uh, what do you call them, uh, the mice, the, the, the bed bugs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, you know, I used to like to go to bed. I used to like to go to bed and, and eat something while I was in the bed. Wake oh, up, no. Wake up with crumbs all over no, the bed. No. Yeah, but in the bed, with when you look with bubble gum in your mouth and wake up, it's all up in your head. How did it get way up there? <laughs> Like it must crawl, yeah, yeah. It must crawl up your chin, up your nose, and get up there and stick in your hair. You know, yeah, yeah, I want to. Yeah. Hey, I try it now. I see if you can find anything up there to stick with. <laughs> but I had to stick to my chin. Thank you, Judy. She said, "Thank you, dear sweet Sawyer's. Thank you, sweetheart, for listening to us. Thank all of you guys. Oh, for we listening love you to guys. Us. We love you. We know that sometimes we get on our soapbox and we just have to have a heart to heart with you. Mm -hmm. But we love you so much, and we hope you're staying safe out there. We want you to do what they tell you to do. The eternal self is the trusting of God inside of you for all situations. So stop trying to use your mind and your feelings to as a as a point of trust. Trust. Lean on the trust." Trusted one that has always been there for you as you in your new form, in your real form. Okay. And I want to, I want to just do a quick prayer. Can I do a quick, mm -hmm. yeah, quick, go ahead. quick prayer? Father, I'm asking that you would touch the ones who are listening to us right now. Yes. Who have concerns about the vaccine. Yes. And concerns about their own welfare. Come forward. We ask that you yes. would send forth the angels to bring comfort Come from the and inside relief and reveal. to them and bring them to a place of absolute inner peace. Thank you so and much. And we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, yes. thank you for helping us financially. They have already put on the screen there how you can send uh, monetary help to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We need it. To help keep us going. And we'll be back with you on Tuesday night. Oh, Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over one, Tuesday? didn't I? This is Tuesday. We'll be yeah. back with you Sunday morning. At 10. Live and in color. Mm -hmm. Fully impact. Fully packed and fully loaded. And I'm glad you were with us, Pastor Lucas. Yeah, Brother Jeff. Give me a call. And let me know how you're doing. Yeah. Okay. God bless you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.